Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I'm your host, Michael Crane. Uh, as you can tell, I have my work shirt on, which means that I've got something else in the mail. And this is from Joel in Allen, Texas. Hello, Joel. Let's, uh, let's, let's take it out and, and uh, see how it came. It feels like it's got some good padding this time, so... Let's keep our fingers crossed. This is another eBay purchase, um, and it should be a, uh, a 3850, I believe, Ethernet switch. Cisco, of course. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. So according to Joel, he shipped this with uh, rack mount ears and power cord and a console cable. So, I expect to see all that, plus some padding. Yeah. Oh, we got padding this time. Excellent. Oh, it looks like he sent us the manual. Mighty nice of them. Oh no, it's just a receipt. That's one thing nice about Cisco, you can find most information you need online. Such a popular switch. And by the way, I, I said 3850 earlier and I checked it's a 3750, which makes sense. Here at the Network Engineering Video Blog, we have a a, uh, a tight budget. Can't afford any of those 3850s. So there it is. Let's take a closer look at it. So this is a it's a WSC 3750 48TS-S version 07 looks like. And it's got the uh, I believe these are uh, 32 gig stack interfaces so you can stack multiple Ethernet switches on on top of each other and number two port and go into number one port and just keep chaining them together I'm not exactly sure how many you can chain together and um, and let's see what else we got here we've got okay there's a console port serial number and I don't know if you can see in there but you can see that it's got a huge blower fan in there, so hopefully this thing's not going to be too noisy. Or IEC connector. Let's see, it's uh, 120 or 240, 1.2 amps. Okay. All right, and uh, looks like someone's put a tag on it. Looks like it's got iOS version 12.2, uh, release 35 in it. All right, let's take a look at the front. The front's got this is a uh, selector switch, so you can see what's what's going on. You just keep hitting this button; it'll it'll uh, it'll it'll toggle through all these these different settings. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. I know it's speed and stack and duplex and stat and. Not sure what master and RPS and SysT means, but anyway, it'll flash the lights and do different things with these ports. And you can see it's uh, let me back up a little bit. You can see it's uh, 48 ports. It's got lights above it. So uh, this is port one, port two, and here's one, two, three, four, etc. And so you can see these these will blink and turn different colors based on the status of the of the Ethernet. And uh, and that, and over here we've got four SFP ports. So uh, those are also used for for trunking. You can you can trunk these switches together, trunk them to a router, if you will. And and uh, you know you don't have to use the back. 32 gig interfaces and uh, let's see if we look at the top here we will notice it's 
It was made in um, January 20th, 2010. So this is about six years old. So, uh, or seven years old, I guess if you count, but since it was made in January, I guess it's seven years old. So uh, this is the end of 2016. So yeah, seven years old, seven year old router, and according to the data sheet, the uh, the mean time between failures (MTBF) for this switch is is about two hundred thousand hours, and and if you do the math on that, that comes up to about twenty five years. So I, I do believe there's still um, uh, still quite a bit of life left in this switch and if you're wondering what these uh, these model numbers if you go and you start looking for um, um, you start looking up these model numbers so the, the C3750 48TS well the TS I believe is the load version that's in it um, this one, I, I, I looked it up. I don't know if these are off the top of my head either. Uh, 48, of course, is the number of ports it has. Uh, TS looks like it may not have uh, supported IPv6. The, uh, or the TS-S, I should say. It's got just a standard IP stack in it. And we'll have to take a look at that when we get into it. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you upgraded it, I, so I don't know if the hardware makes a difference. You might be able to still get... Uh, IPv6 support on this. Uh, um, I'm not going to use IPv6 in the office. I, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, there are some advantages to it, but um, if I was going to uh, put this out into uh, into the the main network, uh, or let me back up. If if I was if I were designing a core routing network, I might use IPv6. Uh, for the quality of service aspects and and some of the other benefits you get with IPv6, but uh, inside a an office LAN, I, I I don't think it's necessary. I could be wrong. Maybe someone will chime in and give me some reasons why it's it's better to use IPv6 in an office, but I haven't seen them. So, all right. So let's take a quick look at the eBay listing. Um, I noticed it's, it's kind of interesting. It says sold for $69 and 50 cents. Uh, however, I, I did the make an offer for 50 bucks and, um, and he sold and that's what I paid for. It was $50. So I'm not exactly, oh, $54 with tax. I'm not sure why he reported 69.50. It sounds like that might just cost him more commissions to eBay, but I don't know. Maybe he's trying to keep the price of this thing up. But let's take a quick look at the picture. If you noticed, he's got it turned on. He's got all the lights are turned on. I guess this is, this is during a post test, uh, which is a power on self test. And he has the pictures of the cables and, and of the console cable, the power cable, console cable. And, and then he's just got a picture of the top I guess that just shows the date of manufacture I'm not sure why he took a picture of the top I would have been more interested in a picture of the back but that's okay so as a side note anyone selling any kind of network equipment online it, you really should take the, the the small extra effort of taking pictures of all six sides it really doesn't take that much extra time and it makes your buyers a lot more comfortable because if I don't see a, a picture of a side my first thought is as well maybe it's damaged or it's got a big scratch or something's wrong with it and they didn't want to advertise that and but really I, I think that that helps your that hurts your selling price because if people aren't gonna bid high if they're not as confident and what you're selling. So anyway, uh, back to the warning signs. Uh, when I when I was looking at this, um, uh, you know, I, I looked at the, uh, the 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 one of the two pictures. And uh, sorry, everything's running kind of slow here. Um, you can see that it 
that he powered it up. That's good. You can see all the lights are on, which is good. This is probably during a power on self test or a post test. Uh, he shows the pictures of the, the two cables he's going to provide. And he also provides a picture of the top, which shows a manufacturing date. And, and that's kind of nice. I Personally, I would have rather have had the uh, picture of the back, but um, that's fine. So, um, so if we look at his feedback right here, he's got 1,033 feedback. And 98.1% of those is, are positive. I, I actually looked, and and he only had one negative feedback in the last 12 months, so, so that's okay. I, I know from experience you can't please everybody. So, uh, and he's got uh, free expedited shipping. That was very nice. Uh, even when I offered him 50 bucks, and I offered, since he's in Allen, Texas, I offered to go pick the switch up, you know, to save him money. And... You know, with the free shipping to take my $50 offer, and he shipped it to me anyway. That was very nice. I appreciated that. Uh, and it ended up, and I got it within four days, probably faster than that, actually. Uh, you know, he offers the 30 day money back guarantee, buyer pays return shipping. And I'm okay with a buyer pays return shipping unless it's the seller's fault. If the seller did like what the last guy did with a 3845 router and throws it in a box with absolutely zero padding or any kind of bubble wrap or anything just that's bouncing around in a box and a 45 pound router and expects it to make it to me undamaged is is negligent and in that case i think the the, the seller should pay return shipping because it was their fault but anyway and then the rest of it is just, uh, you know, he's, it's the same old, you know, it's a used item. He shows the part number, uh, the, the model number, I mean. And um, you know, then he just says what's included, and that's it. So I, I felt pretty comfortable bidding on this and or making an offer on it, and I'm glad I got it. So let's take a quick look at the, uh, the spec sheet or the data sheet for the 3750 that we got. And... Um, Let's see here. We've got the uh, 3750-48TS. It has uh, 48 10100 ports and four SFP uplinks. <clears throat> okay. It's got the stackwise technology, which is the the uh, umbilical cables, if you will, that connect the different Ethernet switches together. Uh, Energy-wise, not sure what that is. Jumbo frames, yeah, that's nice. Always want jumbo frames. Uh, IPv6 support. I'm I'm not um, sure our supports IPv6, and I kind of looked at the sp the spec sheet, you know, earlier, so I I have an idea of, of what I got. <clears throat> I know we don't have PoE, and I'm pretty sure we don't have gigabit ethernet on the SFPs. So here's what the um, oh that was not a very helpful picture. That's that's what that's what these things look like when they're umbilical together. Oops. Sorry, it's jumping all around, isn't it? Is uh, you basically tie this switch, your top switch is normally your controller switch. And you tie this switch to that switch, and that switch to that switch, and that switch to that switch, and you come back all the way back up and tie the bottom one into the top, and and they're one big happy family. And I believe that's a 32 gig interface, and and we'll see that the uh, switching fabric inside the the switch is also 32 gig. We can go through some of these real quick. I don't want to bore everyone with this. I'll link in the the data sheet if you want to take a closer look at it but uh, we'll just hit the highlights here so uh, DHCP good um, let's see automatic QoS yeah, I don't care about that master configuration that's for the stacking auto sensing on non SFP ports so well, that's pretty much every switch in the world does that now it, it just means it'll it'll detect the speed based on um, you know, what you plug in is 10, 100, 
in our case. We don't have a thousand. <clears throat> Auto negotiation for a half and full duplex. Yep. Uh, trunking dynamic trunking protocol. Okay. Port aggregation. Good. Uh, Ethernet channel groups. Good. Link aggregation control protocol. Good. UCP. Yep. Um, don't have that. Well, I guess we do have the thousand base SX. So this is for the SFP modules. And, uh, the default configuration, we're probably not going to get that. Hopefully, he reset the password to Cisco Cisco, which is the default. If not, we'll have to hack it. <clears throat> Superior redundancies for fault backup. Okay, um, spanning tree, good. Uh, bandwidth aggregation. Oh, okay, so you can, this is where you can run multiple links, like uh, I have four ports that are running 400 meg instead of just just you know one uh, one 100 meg port so it, so it acts like a 400 meg pipe instead of a just a 100 megabit pipe <clears throat> okay um this is a layer of three stuff express forwarding uh unicast routing um rip that's good uh ipv6 OSPF okay okay advanced <clears throat> this is a I guess they don't have I, OSPF for IPv4 at least they don't say anything about it I, I would be surprised if um, they didn't have it uh, although it does say advanced IP and I don't believe we got the advanced IP one but we did buy an Ethernet switch right and so we we have a router so we don't really <laughs> care too much about this layer three stuff but if you do it's it's nice hsrp that stands for a hot standby router protocol that's for uh, uh failing over and trunking protocol that's good vlan map <clears throat> uh, stacking yes we know about advanced qos network security features oh well, i got a whole plethora of them ssh yep acls yep you know, they just have all kinds of stuff in here. So, um, if there's anything in here, DHCP snooping. Okay, um, wow, look at all this stuff. There's so much, I don't even want to read it. It's, um, what is the term? TLDR, too long, didn't read. I mean, really, you just want to buy something <laughs> that fits what you're looking for, and, 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 my needs are pretty meager at this point. Uh, I was just looking for a good Ethernet switch, and, and uh, that was cheap. And I think fifty dollars is pretty darn cheap for everything in the, that this thing does. Plus, I've got another uh, what is it about uh, eighteen years left to use it. <clears throat> Remote switch port analyzer. Well, that's nice. Uh, okay, uh, TFTP. The multifunction LEDs. Yeah, that's that's kind of the LEDs we're looking at earlier, where it says uh, per port for half duplex, full duplex, ten base T, under base T. Um, it kind of gives a static on those on those LEDs on the front panel. Uh, network assistant software. We don't care about any of that. Smart ports. Okay. Web browser. No, we only use the CLI here in the network engineering video blog okay here's some interesting so yeah so it has the 32 gigabit per second um, switching fabric good uh, stack forwarding rate of 38.7 million packets per second okay uh, 64 bit packets are pretty small <laughs> so I think that's like the smallest you can get um, so it's got 128 meg of DRAM, uh, 16 meg of flash memory, um, and for that model, uh, other models have more. It can support 12,000 MAC addresses. That's good. Uh, 20,000 unicast routes. That's that's good. That's our basic. That's a basic route. 
is a unicast otherwise it it's, a, it's either unicast or multicast and multicast is like like how video was can be streamed <clears throat> uh configure maximum transmission unit of 9000 which is like a jumbo frame oh yeah, here you go yeah 918 bytes jumbo frames for bridging okay <clears throat> And only oh it only supports that's on the gig ports and it only supports 1546 on the fast ports now fast and 100 base T are the same thing by the way uh, connectors and cabling yeah, yeah yeah power connectors don't care dimensions yep fit in a rack <clears throat> weighs nine pounds Oops. weighs nine pounds yep <clears throat> uh, operating temperatures Okay, um, so 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, you wouldn't want to throw this baby up in your attic and expect it to live. Acoustic noise, and then okay, non power over Ethernet models, <clears throat> which is what ours is. So ours is 42 decibels. That's uh, well, that's that's probably pretty darn loud. You know, we'll have to check it out when we. Gotta fire it up. That's, that's uh, meantime between failures. This is interesting. This is uh, so ours is right here. So um, 217,824 hours is the average lifespan of this switch. So um, <clears throat> and I did the math on that earlier when I read it. That comes to about 24 years. So uh, we're good to go. Uh, it's only seven years old. So we're we're good. Uh, let's see, maximum rated power supply, maximum rated. So here we go. So it's uh, about like burning a 75 watt incandescent light bulb 24/7 uh, with this thing plugged in. So uh, yeah, it draws draws a little bit of juice. Um, measured 100% throughput power consumption. Okay, well, oh, wrong one. 66. It actually goes down. That's kind of interesting. Oh, okay, this is the maximum that we're looking at. This is the uh, when they ran maximum throughput through the fabric, I'm guessing. <clears throat> I don't know how they set up the test, but it's only 66 watts, so that's good. And then at 5% throughput power, it was dropped down to 60, so not a big difference. And this, these are power over Ethernet guys, AC input voltage, DC input, and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, here's for the SNMP. Here's all the MIBs for all the SNMP stuff. That's good. Here's all the standards it supports. Yep. The safety certifications, uh, EMS stuff. Yeah. So we have we have this one, the 48TS-S. And then there's this one right here, and and this provides full IPv6 dynamic routing, and, and I believe that's hardware routing. I think I remember reading that somewhere. <clears throat> so really, the only difference. So I, I would be surprised if this unit didn't do IPv6. It just might not have the hardware in it for it for the fast uh, dynamic routing. I, I would be very surprised if this doesn't support IPv6. Uh, even though I'm not going to use it, so I don't really care. Um, so, uh, and plus, we, we only got the IP base software feature set, which is probably just the load. Um, and that can be changed out. And this one has the advanced one. So, uh, that's about it. Like I said, I'll link in the, the, the data sheet if you want to read more about this switch. And so, I popped the top on this 3750 so we could take a look inside. And I was thinking about blowing it out and just making sure there was no parts missing. And um, and this is, here's the front of it, right here. So you can see these are all the light pipes for every one of the the 48 switches. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, and if you kind of look around, there's there's not really uh, anything in here that looks like it can be removed um, yeah, everything must be just on board I I see a you know missing part but that would have to be soldered in it looks like 
there's that that squirrel cage fan let me see if I can zoom in on that there's that squirrel cage fan right there I mean you can see it's got a little bit of dust inside it's probably hard to see I'll probably still take it out to the shop and and blow it out just for just for a good measure but um let me back it up here a little bit yeah I don't see anything that's that's really missing I, here's the power supply here so that's uh that's really nothing special um like I said I'm not going to analyze the electronics in it uh Dave over at the EV blog would would do a ten times better job at that than me and I do see it's got a Nichicon cap in there that's that's good Dave says they're one of the best so I uh, I believe him and uh, let's see what else we got here um, yeah so here's the 32 gig interconnects and uh, you know some heat sinks on some some processors or ASICs or whoever they are can't really tell unless I pull them off and I'm not gonna do that that's for another show so yeah I was I was actually just kinda looking inside here to see if there was maybe some RAM memory sticks or or something re that could be removed and but doesn't look like anything has been removed because there's really nothing in here to remove except for maybe these SFPs and that just looks like an add-on board um, I don't I add on being a daughter board I, I don't I don't think they would ship it without these maybe they do I, and I don't know but yeah that's uh that's pretty much it um, I don't see anything else of interest oh I see a dead bug there but uh yeah that's that's um that's about all she wrote so anyway uh, I hope you I hope you liked this uh, this video it, it's gone on pretty long so I, I I'm just gonna cut it short here and and if you do like these kind of videos uh, let me know the next video about this will be uh, looking at the iOS and maybe resetting the password and uh, and then doing the initial configuration on it so like I said if you if you like this video uh, let me know in the comment section or and let me know. I appreciate it.